Hello, welcome to Maya Core. My name is Mayana and today I will be talking about the Britney Spears book, The Woman and Me. I literally just finished this book and at first I didn't know if I was going to do a video on it because I've never done a video on like a memoir before. But I have so many emotions. I need to talk about, I need to talk about this book. Literally, look at my notes. So I'm going to be doing my makeup because I'm going to be filming some other videos today and so I just decided like why not just kill two birds in one stone and do like a little get ready with me discussion on this memoir. I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook is read by Michelle Williams which I don't know I kind of wish that Britney read the audio but um I can understand why not like it might have been too hard to relive or maybe she just didn't want to like she literally did not have to because the, audio, the book was still good like I gave the book five stars I just really wish that she would have read it because I love when celebrities read their own memoirs just because it just feels so much more like personal but honestly having Michelle Williams didn't read it didn't really take away from the book but anyway so on to the book so the book starts off um talking about Britney's family so at first it was just her her brother her mom and her dad she grew up in Louisiana basically her dad was an alcoholic and her mom had filed for divorce and everyone in her family was like no girl like go back to him so then her mom ends up like unfiling for divorce and just decided to stay with him um even though her dad was an alcoholic he wasn't like an abusive type of alcoholic he would hit her mom sometimes but mostly he was the kind of drunk who would just disappear for days or he would just like sleep and like her mom would be like running around the house screaming after her mom threatened to leave you know her dad her dad got his shit together for a little bit he got a job but I forgot it was like a something to do with like bodybuilding I guess he got a job and but that didn't last for long he ended up going back into alcoholism instead of just like refiling for divorce the mom just decides to stay she also states that they were poor they lived in like a three bedroom house and before this she even states like I personally feel like she found her love of music because of like she talks about um like church and like the women who sung gospel and I feel like that inspired her to start singing she auditions for house of the mouse with she also mentions christina aguilera which i thought was crazy um but neither of them got it and so britney was sad but you know she didn't let that ruin you know her love for singing or stop her from wanting to sing and so she ended up going to work at like a smaller play and she ended up getting like a pretty decent role and she used that to re-audition for house of mouse and so this is where she meets justin timberlake and also Christina Aguilera also gets in the House of the Mouse too at this time. Which I just thought was so funny because like technically Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears are childhood friends. Like I just find that like insane. She talks about uh, having a crush on Justin and there's this part that I found ironic where they had their first kiss and Janet Jackson was playing in the background. And if we all know the story of Janet Jackson Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake I just thought that the irony there was hilarious. She also mentions that she was drinking smoking and driving by the age of 13 which I find insane but she was also born in the 80s like my mom was born in the 80s and my mom was always telling me stories about how she started smoking like smoked cigarettes at a young age because of the influence of adults and how adults back then didn't really pay attention like, like that makes sense um but like she was telling the story about how she was like driving the car and her mom was like do you smoke cigarettes because she smells like cigarettes she smells like smoke she's like do you smoke and like Brittany confessed and her mom just ended up going crazy and they crashed and she crashed into the pole at like a good point um because if she had it crashed at a certain angle they would have everyone would have flew through the windshield and also Jamie Lynn Spears was born at this time because Jamie was in the back by the way she also talks about a point after sorry I'm going back and forth she also talks about a point when uh, Jamie was born where her mom hemorrhages and she's like bleeding out to death and that was just like really traumatic for her she points that out as well she goes and she's auditioning and she's like trying to become a singer and obviously she successfully does and so 
she talks about how this at this point Ju justin timberlake had got into in sync and there was like another person that she mentions who got into a group but i don't know who she was talking about and so she decided to go solo but because they were childhood crushes they stayed in touch and i just love when so i just love when celebrities mention other celebrities in books like in the book she talks about mariah carey which we will circle back to not really important but it's important to me so i want to state that so yeah she mentions like meeting mariah carey for the first time and how mariah carey was just so nice and how like that was like one of her best moments and it's just like oh britney is just like she's so i hate to say this about celebrities because i literally do not know her from a can of paint but she's just so humble like she's just she's just a humble girl like i just don't know how else to describe it britney starts to talk about how interviews and like being excited for interviews and she would see that nsync would get all the good questions and she was so excited for her questions and then she would get to her interview and they would be asking her inappropriate questions like were her boobs real which she was a teenage girl at this time and then also later on in the book she states that people would ask her about like her virginity and like if she was still a virgin and she's very open about it she states that she wasn't a virgin uh since she was 14 but to keep her image like she just went with it and i don't think she really regrets it but she just doesn't like it's just why is it important like why is her because no one asks men these type of questions and that's why i love this book this book because um it's very like feminist and very like she she was i don't know the patriarchy was against her and it just shows she also mentions like in the interviews like people would ask her about her corrupting kids and like oh like how do you feel about corrupting kids because she will wear like these uh really revealing outfits and blah 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 blah. and she would i liked her answer she would just state that like she's not their parents like that's that's the parents job like why are you why are you all up in my business like i don't know i I definitely get that also mentioned how much she loved jamie lynn spears which just makes it so unfortunate you can just tell like as a bigger sister she just loved jamie lynn and like they had a, a really good relationship at this point in the book and i just <laughs> it makes me so sad that she's such a fucking loser you could just tell that like jamie lynn just meant so much to her like so then her and Justin are dating at this time and she talks about the iconic denim on denim outfit. How it was originally like a joke to her like she was just like what if because he was already going to wear denim and she was just like what if I wear denim and he got a lot of uh, flack for that in the interviews um they used to dress like uh, they used to like match each other a lot but he got a lot of flack for the denim in interviews which I find very funny because he was gonna wear the denim on denim whether Britney wore it or not. So I feel like Britney, like them doing it as like a couple thing, that actually kind of like saved you no know, men. They care about like how they're perceived by like other men. And so I feel like he could use the excuse of like, oh yeah, it was Britney's idea. It was like my girlfriend's idea. Um, because I feel like the denim on denim was a lot at the time. And like now it's an iconic look, but at the time it was a lot. And so people were giving him flack. And if it wasn't for Britney, I personally think that like, they would have been on his ass like real bad then she talks about justin cheating on her and like moments when nsync had went to london and the tabloids caught um him in the car and she talks about how she feels like the tabloids were doing this on purpose and purposely trying to make her feel bad and just um purposely catching him cheating on her and the tabloids had caught him in the car with some other girl from a different band. I'm sorry, I didn't know who the band. If I don't know who she's talking about, I just was like, whatever. Um, so then she talks about that, and then she talks about how he, um, he, they were like at a show or something, like her show or something, and he's talking to his friends, and there's another person who walked by, and he tells his friend that he would hit that, and it was another celebrity. Britney does not mention who it is because she doesn't want the woman to feel bad, and there's just moment, there's just moments like these throughout the books, the book where it's like she is very caring of other people's feelings and how they'll pe be perceived and how they'll feel, and I don't know. She just like you can just tell that she's like 
very caring about feelings she was very aware of how much she got around and she looked past it because she was in love with him she says that very early on before she even gets into the cheating she wanted to have a she thought they were going to be together forever they were going to have children that they were going to get married and they were just going to be like this really happy couple and you could just tell like she really loved him a lot and how much like love and relationships mean to her which makes the next part very disappointing because then you get into i mean i'm sure you guys have seen um the part where she talks about um how she has an abortion she finds out that she's pregnant and she's kind of like she's not really scared she's kind of just like oh well i'm pregnant and she's kind of i want to say happy about it but not like too happy you know because she wanted to start a life with him she wanted to start a family with him so she was like okay whatever like i already wanted these things like whatever and so she tells him and he just does not react the way that she thought he would he convinces her to get an abortion and then on top of that um he doesn't want people to know so he doesn't they don't go to an actual doctor so essentially she gets an illegal abortion in the book she states how much in pain she was and how uncomfortable it was so you would think that someone who loves you wouldn't put you through something like that she has an abortion and she's like you know what like it was really hurtful she was in a lot of pain but she like moves on she's like i still love him like this is still the love of my life you know we can move past this and then he breaks up with her through text like a fucking loser like the loser he is he breaks up with her through text and then to make matters worse she hears cry me a river on the radio which is a song about this woman who cheated on him and now is playing the victim and it's just like so now people they know about their relationship so now people are like oh my gosh like oh damn i forgot i want to put blush under my makeup they're like oh my gosh like britney like britney cheated and it's like so crazy because britney didn't do such a thing like she was so in love with this man he was over here running around like the little whore babylon you know having sex with anything with legs and then he wants to paint her as the and it just he's a piece of shit as we know like he's done countless things to where we know he's a piece of shit like come on then she goes into talking about family and her relationship with her mom and how it just isn't great and how usually for holidays she would spend that time with justin and his family because they were just so nice to her like their family felt like home and yes yeah, sometimes her mom would come with her but it just didn't feel like home the way that his family did like she loved his grandma like his family just felt like what she needed and she didn't feel the same from her own family and she was just talking about like when she had went to go visit her mom and how like she had saw how jamie was like reacting and how jamie was like treating her mom she was just so like perplexed by like how her sister was like getting away with acting like this and how her mom just like didn't care she talks about how jamie changed um and like randomly and like i this was a turning point in their relationship like they were never the same um how like they were growing up and like you can tell that britney still loved jamie she just wanted her to have a little bit more respect and like to not be such a brat like it's just very clear that like jamie got the life that like britney and their her older brother didn't have Cause she does have an older brother i don't know if i mentioned that she does have an older brother um she doesn't talk about him much she found out you know justin moved on but i need to move on too so she somehow ends up finding about colin farrell and she just go walks onto set like literally like there were no security she just walks on the set and she sits like the director like lets her sit in his chair and colin comes up to her and asks her like what do you think and they end up going on what she describes a bra which i personally perceived as a situation ship it's a two-week thing and it just seemed like very fun and what she needed but then after that she starts talking about like you just said that she's just depressed and just very sad and she's just cooped up in her apartment in new york and she doesn't leave and um at one point she like loses her key so she doesn't want to leave because she doesn't want to bother anyone and she states how like she just doesn't like bothering people madonna shows up and madonna like gives her a pep talk and then they go and they perform at the vmas which they did the iconic kiss and it was more so because britney just wanted to do something surprising she wanted to do something to gag the girls so she just kisses her and 
yeah so Brittany starts talking about how she wants to do a song that's like different from the kind of songs that she's been putting out and it kind of gives like that moment in like the decom slash nick movies where the artist makes like pop music it, but she wants to like the kind of music that she likes but she's not allowed to and it just i don't know it reminded me of that except she actually does get to make her song um her team is like okay if we can get a big hit on it then you can produce this song and so she's like let's get madonna and so she gets madonna madonna agrees to it she makes a song she talks about how it's one of her most proudest songs that she's made to this day and then she talks about like the photo shoot i mean not the photo shoot the video shoot that they did and how she just noticed that like madonna acted like bitch i'm madonna you know bitch i'm madonna like she's like bitch i'm madonna like you're not gonna tell me what to do where to go where to stand whatever whatever i'm gonna tell you what i want to do whereas britney like she would like listen to the directors if the director told her to do something she would just uh, um do it and i think that just comes from like her being so southern and like polite but also she's just a very nice girl like she states that all the time just how nice she is but then she like you can kind of see that she takes note from madonna and she's kind of just like oh okay like like madonna girl i see you so she goes into talking about when she drunkenly got married to like one of her childhood friends they weren't really in love with each other but it was just something that they did randomly because they had too much drinks they were having she just thought it was like something fun but her parents find out and they're at her place and they're just tripping like they are like tripping balls like they are like going they're like pissed at her and she's She's just so confused. She just thought it was a fun night, but her her family had like such a serious reaction to it. She wonder she was wondering like why her family was being so controlling because she was an adult at this point. She could make her own decisions. She was a star. She was Britney Spears, and then she starts to realize it was because she was financially she was financially supporting her family. But yeah, so they make her get a divorce or whatever. Um, so then she meets a new guy and she falls in love with him and she is she gets married to him his name is kevin i don't know who the fuck kevin is or what the fuck kevin does all i know is his name is kevin and he's a fucking loser it's nice because she's about to start a family like she has mentioned throughout the book how much she wants a family how much she wants to be married i mean honestly she's just like me for real to be honest so she finally gets to have that family that she has been so like craving so she gets pregnant with her two sons back to back so she states how she she always states how she was pregnant for two years and so um she was pregnant and she uh this kind of like she loves it but she also had like postpartum so then she also talks about when she was pregnant she heard that jamie was being bullied on the set of zoe 101 so she goes and she cusses out the girl that bullies her but then Brittany in the book mentions that she was wrong and she apologized. She never mentions the girl's name, um, but we all know who it is. Like if you're around my age, you know exactly who the girl is. But she apologized to her. She never states her name, which I really respect. Like Brittany throughout the book never mentions anyone's name. So if you don't want to be mentioned, she is not going to mention you. But I love that she knew that she was wrong and she mentioned that in her book i really respected that because i know a lot of people sometimes will know that they're wrong and not bring it up and just pretend like it never happened but she addresses it in her book and i really respect her for that the useless man that she's married ends up becoming distanced from her and she knows what's coming from it but the fame and the money was so obviously like getting to his head like he's getting to the tabloids he's a rapper who, who the fuck is this man who is he yeah so then she ends up she's like okay you know what? i'm gonna file for divorce um everyone convinced her to file for the divorce first because if he filed he was gonna it was gonna be nasty and so because he filed she also had to pay him because she filed so she was the one breaking up the fam which he probably did on purpose so then on top of that he takes her kids and she's thinking it's gonna be like you know for a few weeks um whatever whatever no it's months like she does not see her kids for months and she starts fucking losing it one thing about britney is she's a mother okay she loves her sons down she mentions them every point in the book that she can she loves them they mean the world everything that she did was inspired by or for them yeah she never got a chance to like see them from the grief she shaves her head like she shaves her head she she has so many fuck you moments in this book i fucking loved it shaving her head was a way of saying fuck you she was sick of being the good girl that's all she was ever seen as 
and she just shaves her head. Up until this point, she is talking about just like how no one is like loyal to her. Like she mentions how her bodyguard literally quits and then starts working for her ex-husband. And she also mentions how Jamie Lynn was pregnant at 16 and like how she found out she was pregnant. And she wasn't judgmental about it or anything. Um, it was just like more so like about her mom. It's like how could you let this 16 year old become pregnant? It's like you don't care. And that's more so the, and I think that's more so in a sense it's like Britney more so is breathed wrong. Their parents are like, oh my gosh, Britney. And it's like her sister gets pregnant at 16, ruins her career because I remember being a fan of Zoe 101 and finding out, I'm so sorry, I kind of had hatred towards Jamie and that child because I had loved Zoe 101. Now in hindsight, actually learning like how shitty Jamie Lynn Spears is, it's actually deserved. I'm actually glad it got canceled. But growing up, Zoe 101 was like one of my favorite shows and it had like my favorite couples and like my favorite characters and I just, it was set in like... It was set in a boarding school. I remember literally researching, trying to find out boarding schools in Michigan. And then y'all see my skin tone? Girl, my mom was not gonna go for that. And she didn't, and she didn't, but all because it was only one on one. And it's like, I just remember finding out that Jamie, and I was a kid, and I remember finding out that, she, that it had stopped because she got pregnant at 16. And I was so mad at the daughter. I was so mad at the child, cause I'm like, this is all your fault. It, it was not the child's fault. It, was the, it wasn't Jamie's fault either, no matter how shitty Jamie was. It was the parents' fault, okay? Brittany was talking about how she was, like, having sex at such a young age. And I don't think it's, like, their fault in, like, the sense of, like, they shouldn't have been having sex or anything like that. It's that their parents should have been teaching them about sex education, like, way before then, to be honest. Brittany was just, like, she was never she was never judgmental about it or anything, though. So then we, she brings up, we get into the conservatorship um so one day her parent her she was she had met this guy he was a photographer they were really like they weren't really in love but they were having like a good time like she really liked him and her parents were, like begging her to come over and she was just like what the heck and they were just like they were like Brittany like come over like we just want to see you like come over and she's like what's going on so she goes over there bitch she's like oh what's going on and like they were acting weird and she had her photographer boyfriend with her and their boyfriend was like even though they were acting weird then the bitch they bring the helicopters out she's like what the f what the fuck y'all done brought the helicopters out they basically got her into this conservatorship and she also mentions that her dad was getting paid more than her she's a star and her dad was getting more money than her what? Her mom wrote a book about her shaving her head and she, Brittany talked about how she would be at home and she would turn on the TV and there she would see pictures of like, cause you know how dramatic these fucking uh, talk shows are. So there would be like videos of her and like then it would cut to like her mom talking about a book. My mom crying all because Britney shaved her head and Britney talked about that moment and like how she just felt so ugly and like how everyone was so attached to her hair and she felt like that was her greatest asset. Personally, because I was actually just watching um, one of the clips with her shaved head. She looks so good. Like, I think it takes a real bad bitch to look good with a bald head. I personally think that she ate, like she ate that. Like, face card did not decline at all. And she, I don't know, she looked good to me. It's just so crazy because a lot of women have an attachment to their hair because people, they just don't feel beautiful without hair. And it's like crazy because it's like, it's just hair. I am a victim of that. So I'm not even trying to pretend like I'm like above it. It's like, I understand. So when she was talking about that, I got it because it's like, I had cut my hair shorter than what I usually do. And recently I've just been feeling so insecure about it. So it was like hearing her talk about it, it just made me feel so much better and just to realize that like I am not my hair and the fact that her mom wrote a whole book basically whining all because she shaved her head like her mom is insane and her mom makes everything about her and it's like girl be calm she couldn't control her own money but she was allowed to go and show like how I met your mother mind you her dad was an alcoholic which is like come on y'all are letting like I just I kind of want to know like what did her dad have over like the court like why were they why I don't know I guess I don't know much about conservatorships like I need to look into that because it's like they were all on the dad side like they were not budging like there was even a moment where she like mentions that he's an alcoholic and nobody cares she mentions in an interview that her dad's an alcoholic and that was mysteriously cut out of the interview and it's like that's fucking crazy he's like controlling her money he's giving her like two thousand dollars a like a week every two weeks or something it's like what and there's this part where she's talking about performing on stage because she still performed even though um it was a conservatorship which 
I've learned that conservatorships are, I guess, for people with like celebrities or people with money. And it's when their family feels like they are inequipped to handle their own money, they, um, their family put th puts them other in conservatorship. But like I said, I haven't done my, I don't know what a conservatorship is. I never did like research on it, but from what I've seen, it's just a way to get celebrities like to control them and get money out of them basically um so what i thought was interesting was there was this part in the book where she was talking about performing and like how her dad still had her performing even though she wasn't seeing that money and she mentions that it was about to be like 9 11 and that random mention had reminded me of mariah carey which she mentioned earlier and it reminded me of how Mariah Carey always says that she's thankful for 9-11 and people are always like what the fuck and it's because if 9-11 hadn't happened she would she would have been in a conservatorship as well so it's so interesting that like early in the book um Brit one of the first celebrities that Britney meets is Mariah Carey and Britney ends up in a conservatorship and Mariah Carey almost ends up in one and I think the only reason I think that if they would have her family would have waited a few weeks until a few weeks for the conservatorship like she would have been in the same situation as mariah carey basically i don't know anything though that's just like my own little stupid little theory so yeah and then her dad says to her her dad is like controlling her and then he goes i'm britney spears now Ex excuse me he done lost his damn mind he lost his god damn mind she didn't know that she could get her own lawyer until like 13 years later the lawyer given to her the lawyer didn't even say like that she could get her own lawyer like he and then he was shit obviously because she was in it for 13 years she was treated like a teenager on punishment like she would express that she wanted to do like certain things for her show like she wanted to perform like new music and they'll be like well the least we could do was perform new music for you while new, new music while you're changing clothes between songs like what like she wanted to do things for her fans like she just talks about how much she loves her fans and how connected she feels to her fans one of the very few celebrities who i've seen really express admiration for their their fans yeah, and then she talks about also like the disney awards and how they did like that performance for um britney spears and, like you know there was like this whole like what are, like you know when they do like those performances for the celebrities I, i've seen the i've seen it. i don't know if you guys have seen it but it's like a bunch of like younger celebrities they were singing britney songs and then they had jamie go on stage and sing the song and it's like it's so crazy because jamie really was good at pretending like she gave a fuck about britney like i had always respected jamie because i never knew anything about her up until like britney exposed like no this bitch is like she's weird she's with my family so it's crazy that like she doesn't jamie is like she's weird she's weird she doesn't really like britney treats her like shit like she's literally treating her exactly like her parents and then to sit here and do like this performance for your sister like bitch you're strange you're weird get a fucking grip yeah so the conservative ship was literally just the best way to control her and she was a part of it for 13 years so for 13 years it's so crazy because 13 years is such a long time and it's like that's so wild like that's literally like I mean, I'm 25, so it's not almost my whole life, but that's literally, like, most of, like, because I'm not a huge fan of Britney. I'm not saying I'm not a fan, like, obviously. Um, I always thought I was a huge fan until, like, I went and actually listened to her discography, and I was like, oh, I don't know any song. I only know the radio hits. So, I personally would see myself as a fan, but then if you take into the account the fact that I only know radio hits, like, am I really a fan? Um, yes. But that's, like, half of, like, my whole life like knowing her as an artist like that's crazy she basically only went along with it for her sons because they would threaten her all the time and she ends up like her dad ends up her dad became a millionaire off of her off of not doing an alcoholic off of not doing any work that's in bitch are you serious she was constantly put into rehab there's like so many moments throughout this story where they would just randomly throw her ass into rehab um there's one moment in particular and she never did drugs she mentioned this early on in the story like she never did drugs the only thing that she did was smoke drink smoke cigarettes when she had quit drink and drink um which she talked about drinking a lot but she never did any drugs um this the one the scene where the part the scene it's not a fucking movie the part where she randomly got married a lot of people thought that she was on drugs um but she had never because that was when she was hanging out with paris hilton and they thought that she was doing drugs she mentions they never did drugs never the most she did she says is adderall and that's like over-the-counter stuff 
so they accuse her of doing drugs and so they they give her a drug test and the only thing that she had done is like over-the-counter drugs and they basically falsely like um i don't know if they like i don't know if they somebody just put something in there put something in there like her drug test and made it seem like you know she was on drugs or if they just lied all together but whatever they did they lied they put her in a rehab she was in and out of rehab like all the time what ends up helping her realize that she, you know she needed to get out of it was her fans because um someone had showed her like videos of people being like free britney and she just talks about her fans and how they are that like made her realize that like yo i am like because everyone else made her was gaslighting her and made her feel like she was crazy so that her fans saying free britney made her realize that she wasn't crazy and if like she says that if it like wasn't for her fans then she would not have known that like that was wrong and like she was she was right like that was wrong um and so she just talks about her fan so the book ends with her getting a good lawyer she got a lawyer who worked for a bunch of other celebrities like keanu reeves and things like that the lawyer basically saying like i don't like bullies like even people even criminals are allowed better lawyers than what they were giving her and he just didn't like bullies and so they ended up winning the case and she got her freedom and yeah and so now we are here we are today i personally really enjoyed the book yeah and honestly from now on it's fuck her mom fuck jamie lynn spears fuck kevin whoever the hell that is fuck justin timberlake fuck the media and most importantly fuck her dad yeah so i loved it i gave it five stars um it just it made me so i had to talk about it like it just made me so frustrated i was so pissed for her like oh my gosh it was just it was such a good book i loved it i know it got picked in the goodreads choice awards i personally hope that it wins but who knows and so yeah that's it for this video i do want to do one where i read mariah carey's book because i love mariah carey like that is, i'm actually like a huge fan of mariah like i know more than not just her hit songs okay so if you want to see a video on mariah carey's memoir let me know and um i'll definitely review that for you guys but yeah that's it for this video don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one